In this video, we're going to have a look to see how you can create a product grid similar to this one, where we have these product cards, and you'll see that as we hover, the product card is highlighted just to show you the card that you're looking at. And then we also have the quick view option, which will open in a light box, and we can add to cart. And we also then have the standard add to cart button and the view cart button that appears after adding to cart. So that is the grid view that we're going to create. And the other nice thing about this is that it also responds automatically to the category that I'm looking at. So in this case, you'll see that as I go through the different categories, you will see that the products change accordingly. So that's what we're gonna have a look at now. And to build this grid out, let's head over to the back end and we'll have a look and see how this is all Put together so the first thing that we're going to do then is head back to the admin area and let's just go and have a look we have the standard install we have oxygen builder installed for the plugin we have woocommerce installed and then we also have the pr.net plugin pr.net grid plugin installed to take care of the grids so let's just go and have a look then at the setup I'm going to head over to PRNet Grid, and what I'm going to do is create a new card installation, and we'll build this from scratch. So the first thing I want to do then is create a new card, and call that Product Archive Card Two. All right, created that. We'll publish, and now I'm going to edit that with PRNet Grid. So we'll create this one from scratch. So with PRTNet grid loaded, what we can do, the first thing I like to do is add a section and put everything inside that section. And you'll see why later on. And then we can start adding the elements. So we know we're going to need an image. So let's add the image. We're then going to add a title. So let's add a text image, a text field. Then we're going to need a price. So that would be another text field. So let's add that one in. Then we're going to do the quick view button. So we'll add the quick view. Uh, that's outside. Let's just move it up. There we go. And then the, the last one we're going to do is the add to cart. So there we have the add to cart button. Uh, let's just see if you want to see if an element is loaded. You can click on this element here with the navigator and then inside the section We have a column and inside that column You'll see all the different Items and you can see that they're all loaded inside that section. So I'm going to close that and now what I'm going to do is just start working on the elements. So the first thing we're going to do on the image, make that a featured image. And in this case, in the size, I'm going to say large so that it fits nicely on the larger and the smaller screen. And then we need to allow for a link. Here we'll change it to custom URL. And the link URL will then be to the post URL. And that's what we're going to do for now. I'm not going to enable the lazy loading. And we'll save that. The next element that we're going to look at will be the text element, which will be the title. So in the content for the text element, I'm going to head down here to the WooCommerce product title. We're going to set the alignment to center. The link we will do to the post URL and under advanced, I'm going to change the typography and the size then to uh, let's make it 18 and the weight I'm going to change down to 400 Then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to look at some margin and padding and I'm going to add just some margin underneath At the bottom and we're going to make that 15 Right so and then under the image What I'll do there is I'm also going to add some Margin so margin and padding and on the bottom we'll add 15 there as well then we're going to head over to the price so in the next text element that we loaded let's 
head over to our WooCommerce setup here and we'll go to full price. What we'll do here is change it from an H2, let's just make that a div. And the link URL, we won't put in a link URL, and the alignment will move to the center. And we'll make the typography or the text size here in this case, we'll make that 18. Then what we'll also do is we'll go over to the margin and padding, and what I'm going to do is add 15 at the bottom of that one. Then we're going to head over to the buttons. So the first button that we're going to do is going to be the quick view. And what I'd like to do is just move that to the center. The quick view button, the background color, I'm going to make gray in the normal view. Then I'm going to go to the hover widget and I'm going to make that background black. And what I'll also do then is make the text color yellow. So let's do that. And now when we hover, you'll see we have that effect. And what I also want to do is head over to the margin. And at the bottom, let's do 15 as well. So now we have equal spacing between the elements. And the last one that we're going to look at will be the add to cart. So in that case, also we're going to center that. What I'd like to do here in the normal view is make the background color red. And in the hover widget, I'd like to make that background slightly darker red. So that's what we have on our card. The other thing that we'd like to do now is hover. When we hover over the card, we'd like there to be a box shadow. And to do that, what I'm going to do then is having selected the uh, section, I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to make the border radius of this particular card. We're going to change that to five. Then I'm going to look at the box shadow. But here then I'm going to change the hover widget, the normal view to the hover widget view. And now when I go to the box shadow, I'm going to edit that and set the horizontal to zero. I'm going to do a slight vertical. The blue will make it 10 and the color we're going to make a light gray. So when I hover, it'll just be a very subtle gray border that appears. And that seems to, that looks good. Um, if I want to test it, yeah, I think that's going to work just fine. Then we're going to save that. So we've pretty much finished with our card. We have the title, we have the price, the quick view, the add to cart. What we don't have is the button in case we were having a sale. So to include that, we'll head over to the elements. And what we're going to add now is a product badge. I'm going to add it just here at the top, but I don't want it to sit on top. I'd like it to float. So here we have our product status, which will be sale. Then we have some others. We could also use it to show as a featured product, non-sale or out of stock. In our case, we'll just stick to sale. It'll be a text icon, but we can change it to an icon or an image. In our case, we'll stick to text. And then the text on the item will be sale. Then I'm going to head over to style. And here I'm going to change the text color to white. Then what I'm going to do is change the background color to red. The text alignment I'm going to set to center. Um, I'm going to add some, uh, let's add a border radius here of five. The padding we can set to five. The width, we can also use the slider. And you'll see we can make it any width. And then the word sale automatically adjusts to the alignment in the center. So let's leave it, uh, maybe let's do something like that. And then I think that's all that we need to do now, but we don't want it in that position. We'd like it to hover, so uh, to be um, over the image. So under the advanced tab, we'll go to layout, uh, to position. And I'm gonna change that position from default to absolute and the Z index to 10. And there you'll see it appearing on our card. 
Then I'm going to head over to the style again. And now what I'm going to do is here under margin, I'm going to change that to 20. And you'll see that our sale badge now fits nicely inside uh, the image. We'll save that. If you want to have a look at this in the mobile view, simply click on mobile. It reduces the size and there we see our image. It's not completely accurate because we don't know what it's going to look like with a product image. But what I will just do here immediately is under the style. Um, oh, sorry, under advanced, I'm going to change the margin here to five. No, not that to five. I want to do it for the sale item. There we are, product badge. And I want to change the margin for the product page. And there you go. You can see it's a lot smaller. And also the width, uh, maybe I want to make that a bit less. Um, it might be easier just to type in a number or leave it at the default. But let's make it slightly smaller. We can save. So there we've successfully created our card. And now let's have a look and see what that'll look like in a grid view. So with that done, we head back to the admin area. So we have our product archive card two. We'll head over to grids. And now we're going to create the product archive grid two to match. So grid two. We'll publish that. Then we'll go to edit with Piotnet grid. And inside the Piotnet grid, what I'm going to do now is add that grid. And you'll still see that at the moment um, it'll pick up a default filter for just for posts. We'll come to that now. So I go to my product archive two, which is the one we just created. And I'm going to say current query. So whatever the query is, it will be the current query that this grid, the, pay, the archive in which this uh, grid appears. And in our case, we're going to add it to the product page. So it will be for product. Now we'll have a look at the layout. And let's go with four uh, uh, columns. And then as a columns gap, let's go with 20. And with a row gap, we could also go with 20. So that'll be pretty much as it needs to be. And let's hit save. So there we've created the grid for our archive. Now to install that on our page, uh, the easiest way to do that, um, I'm using Oxygen as the uh, builder for the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Oxygen and I'm going to say edit product archive template. And we'll say edit with Oxygen. Oxygen is loading. Oxygen has loaded. And what I'm going to do now is remove the previous one. So I'll select that and delete it. And then I'm going to add, go to Piotnet grid. And I'm going to add the, the grid. There the grid is loading. And I'm going to select product archive grid 2. And you'll see there's the grid that we created. I'm going to save that. And let's go and test and see how that works. So here we are on the front end. And when we hover, we should see the shadow. And yes, that's working. And when we change the category, then we should only be seeing the current category. So that's under clothing. Let's look at a shorter one like decor which is uh, only going to be uh, one product. Music, I think, has two products. So that's working. So we'll just head back to the clothing one. And then let's have a look at the quick view. Yes, the quick view is working. And let's have a look at the add to cart. So add to cart is working. So yeah, everything is working here as it should. Um, and that's how easy it is to include 
or create and then include a grid inside your template for the category and of course it then automatically updates the products with whatever the default filter is for that category so i hope you enjoy that video and thank you for watching